Svetlana Kavan, who is an associate tutor at School of Global Studies, University of Sussex. Uh, he taught in the Department of International Relations at the University of Sussex since 1975, has published on civil society and democracy in Central Europe, post-communist transition, Soviet, uh, Soviet foreign policy, the Velvet Revolution in Czechoslovakia, and on human rights. Among his research interests at present are history, memory and justice in Central Europe, human rights and modern liberalism, hybridity of culture and origins of ethnicity in Europe from medieval times to the present. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, he was also teaching at Erma Master's program on democracy and human rights in Southeast Europe, where I met him. He was my thesis supervisor in 2019, and it's a really great pleasure to meet with him uh, again after so many years in this way, in this beautiful place, at least uh, for now uh, in the virtual space of uh, Zoom. And his today's talk is going to be about freedom of expression and liberal democracy. He's going to look into the question of what is the value of freedom of expression in such a democracy and what restrictions are legitimate. So please, uh, Professor Kavan, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. <clears throat> well, nice to, be, uh, uh, nice to be with you. I, I, um, in fact, participated in um, uh, the summer school in Hungary. Uh, this is about two decades ago, so um, it's a long time. Um, uh, two preliminary uh, uh, points that I would make, or three rather. One is that um, I'm not sitting in, uh, in the middle of, of, of nature, um, <laughs> as you might have guessed. Um, but I thought a bit of fake background might go well with the topic of the um, of, of, of this particular panel. Um, my, uh, I think, second point is if I knew that uh, algorithmic warfare was going to be the uh, central issue in, uh, in in this panel discussion, I think I would have um, re refused to participate. I think my idea about algorithmic uh, uh, practices is um, is rather negligible. Um, and my third point is a kind of warning, um, which is that I originally um, uh, um, uh, was told that my keynote speech is going to be 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, so I thought that's a doddle. I don't really have to do anything for it. You know, I can speak from the top of my head for uh, 10 to 15 minutes on almost anything. Um, uh, uh, and only a few days ago, I heard that I've got a half an hour. So. I did actually prefer PowerPoint presenta presentation. When I looked at it, I thought this is actually a PowerPoint presentation for an hour long lecture rather than um, uh, um, 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 a much briefer um, a keynote speech. So there's going to be um, a bit of a struggle on my part, so to speak, with the time limit. So I think I'm warning you in advance. Uh, not that I will overstep, but I might actually be cut off in the middle of a sentence. No, no, no. We do have 30 minutes and there is no misunderstanding on that, on that point. So no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not blaming anybody or, or casting any casting any aspersions. What I'm simply saying is that uh, my preparation has kind of led me to um, prepare a PowerPoint presentation this morning. Um, uh, 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 and looking at it, I realised that I've got enough there, so to speak, to speak for a long time. So I think that's the that's the point I'm trying to make. Um, okay. So. Um, I think, uh, I hope it's going to work, but I'm going to try to share the screen so uh, that you can see the PowerPoint presentation. Is, is it now visible? Yes, it's visible. Okay, thank you. So, um, as you can see, uh, uh, um, the title is, uh, I've auto altered the title somewhat to liberal democracy and public discourse, but indeed freedom of expression and its limitations are, uh, uh, is essentially the central issue. Um, so let me again make a few preliminary points. One is that there is a distinctive uh, um, difference between um, uh, uh, policy analysis, I'm sorry, which sorry. involves for... Uh, I'm sorry, can you just make it a, uh, uh, the, like full screen? 
full screen. If possible. I can. Is that uh, yes. better? Thank you so much. Okay. Okay, so um, th there is a difference between uh, a, a policy analysis, um, which tends to entail search for solutions or problems, as against political theory, which is essentially a search for principles, and uh, uh, in some crucial sense also uh, 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 an attempt to um, uh, 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 to uh, provide uh, um, some uh, 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 framework for how to think about problems, how to think about the issues, okay? And my approach tends to be the latter uh, uh, because I'm more interested in political theory than I'm in political analysis. Um, so again, a, a word of warning, I'm not probably going to produce any answers to any of the issues uh, 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 um, at, at best, so to speak, uh, 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 some, uh, uh, some vague suggestions. Second point I'd like to make is that the issue is complex. That are, you know, you can you can actually link this problematic to practically everything, and uh, 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 that's also therefore makes it difficult to decide what the boundaries of what it is that you want to say are going to be. The second point, however, is that there is also a dialectical issue involved, which is that if you think about freedom of expression, for instance, you realize that. Uh, uh, any particular speech act can generate opposite uh, uh, consequences, both positive, in other words, and negative. And so uh, 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 when we actually evaluate um, uh, um, uh, freedom of expression or, or particular speech acts, so to speak, um, what I would call a binary approach, uh, either or, is actually totally unsuitable. What instead you need to do is to evaluate what is the extent of the positive against the extent of the negative that is generated by these uh, speech acts. Um, and that makes uh, for a much fuzzier uh, and more complex analysis. But nevertheless, I think one that is, uh, I think, more useful in grappling with such an important issue as film expression. So uh, 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 finally, uh, what are the issues that I shall be dealing with? And it's uh, 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 largely, start, I'll start by simply briefly outlining uh, uh, some of the central points about liberal democracies. And as I will not be dealing with all the possible models of democracy that are, I'll be concentrating very much on liberal democracy. Um, then I will move on to public discourse and look at the, look at the nature of public discourse, the pros and the cons. Then I'll move on to freedom of expression and, uh, and, and particularly the, uh, um, the thinker who is quite, who's most often quoted, so to speak, in relation to freedom of expression and or right to freedom of expression, that's John Stuart Mill. Um, I will then go on to look at the relationship between freedom of expression and knowledge. Then to, the, I'll consider some of the critiques of freedom of expression. Um, uh, uh, and my final uh, uh, um, area, in some ways probably most, most relevant to what is that you want to be dealing with, which are the um, uh, restrictions of freedom of expression. Um, what restrictions are, in other words, legitimate as against those that are illegitimate? Okay. So, um, let's start by uh, 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 recognizing that liberal democracy involves a form of recognition of diversity. That is a diversity of identities, interests, beliefs, and so on and so forth. So when we encounter uh, uh, claims that what we need is unity of, uh, of uh, um, uh, um, society, community, nation, and so on and so forth, um, we are, uh, in some ways, presenting a somewhat um, uh, uh, a contrary or contradictory uh, um, uh, claim as to the one that actually is based on the recognition that uh, that liberal democracy is a particular political system which involves recognition of diversity. And therefore, the question that arises, how do we reconcile diversity, so to speak, with a sufficient degree of uh, commonality that would uh, uh, generate order, public order? 
And that leads me to a kind of redefinition uh, uh, of uh, 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 liberal democracy uh, or liberal order, which, th which is that it is based on management of conflicts and disagreements. Um, but that these uh, uh, um, uh, conflicts and disagreements that are to be managed must indeed be uh, uh, within the legitimate boundaries of disagreements and conflicts. So the question is, how do we establish what disagreements and what conflicts are legitimate and indeed subject to, uh, uh, therefore, appropriate public discourse as against those that, that, that are illegitimate and, and needs to be somehow banned, suppressed, and so on and so forth. Um, and that, of course, is one of the uh, ongoing problems that encounters all democracies. If you emphasize too much the need, so to speak, for uh, restricted boundaries of disagreements, you are endangering um, uh, um, the um, um, uh, the nature of diversity, but most importantly, you are generating a, a, um, a threat of authoritarianism, which arises out of the search for unity, uh, uh, because that will then, uh, uh, um, on the whole, encourage a process of othering and perceiving the other, so to speak, as some form of um, a dangerous, dangerous threat to the established uh, to the established order. So. It's then linked, of course, to forms of nationalism, racism, xenophobia, and so on and so forth. Um, so uh, uh, this, the, the question of, therefore, uh, how are these boundaries established and how do we establish they are legitimate? Now, of course, you could say that, they are, that, that you establish legitimate boundaries simply through uh, 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 the public discourse and that uh, 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 what people agree to creates this form of legitimacy. So what they agree to tolerate is legitimate as against what they don't agree is, is legitimate and so forth. That, however, creates a problem. And the problem is that A, you're going to, you're going to have, a, dis, you're going to have a, a disagreement between legitimacy and legality. Things that can be legal can be considered then to be illegitimate. But most importantly, it, uh, uh, um, it essentially um, uh, makes it difficult to argue that legitimacy is something to do with justice or fairness, something to do, so to speak, with um, providing grounds, in fact, for uh, uh, unpopular positions, unpopular arguments, and so, and so forth, which are, which, uh, 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 are in fact, uh, at least for me, an absolutely central uh, and necessary aspect of, of liberal democracy. So uh, 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 there, there has to be some uh, 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 guidance to that public discourse if you want to establish these boundaries of dis legitimate disagreements. Um, uh, 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 and we can seek that either in some theory of justice or, or, and fairness, like um, John Rawls's theory of justice, or you can uh, 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 um, seek it, so to speak, uh, 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 through um, uh, uh, putting at the core of your uh, construction of legitimacy some idea of liberty, which uh, 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 um, is not just good for society as well, but for each individual. And I'll return to this point a bit later on. Um, However, at the same time, uh, 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 um, uh, for liberal democracy, these boundaries of agreements and disagreements must also involve some constraints upon the power of the majority, because otherwise um, uh, you, you are going to be talking about forms of um, um, uh, a dictatorship of the, of the majority. So legitimacy, as I, as I refer to, is one of these constraints, human rights, the constitutional rule of law, for instance, are, are, are the other types of restrictions on uh, uh, the rule of the majority. So uh, 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 we've, we are already, I think, here encountering some problems, so to speak, which refer to legitimate boundaries of disagreements and, the, and, and, and what is entailed in this process of management. Let's move on. Okay, so what is the value of discourse? The classical liberal argument, which I think is actually faulty, uh, 
uh, uh, stresses that uh, um, uh, to actually, I can use a quote, which is um, from Winston Churchill when he says, uh, Georgia is better than war war. And what he meant is uh, 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 that um, if you talk, uh, 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 if you discuss, um, you enhance the capacity for, for, um, uh, for peaceful solution of conflicts. So uh, 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 one of the most often stated uh, features of liberalism is that it generates activities so which, which, which contribute to uh, peaceful management, peaceful management of conflicts, and discourse is one of them. Um, of course, the problem is that we are all familiar with the fact that discourse can lead, lead to uh, um, uh, its opposite, i.e., the uh, um, uh, strengthening of the conflicts, so or in fact, uh, it can generate new conflicts. Um, so there is a question mark, which means that we really have to then identify what is the value of public discourse. Why is it that we want to have public discourse? In other words, and I think that that's not probably all that difficult. Um, but I would. Uh, 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 differentiate. Again, it, show, it tells us something about that there, is, as, there are some significant differences between discourses, between nature of discourses, uh, 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 which are going to be quite important, I think, for field expression. So uh, I, I differentiated between discourse rooted in politics and, and discourse rooted in knowledge. Um, when a politician enters into a discussion or into a public discourse, he essentially wants to convince everybody he is right. Uh, and uh, 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 um, which is why, of course, rhetoric, propaganda and so, and so forth are part of the equipment of a, of a, of, of a politician. Um, th th there would be no other purpose, so to speak, to enter into discussion if it wasn't, so to speak, about something that enables us to uh, enables the politician to lead people to accept what he's proposing to do. And, you know, that is a that is an approach to a public discourse that I would associate with someone like Machiavelli. Um, the opposite uh, or somewhat different is the um, is the public discourse that involves knowledge creation. And um, Let me, uh, 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 just to shorten the uh, uh, argument, quote a Greek philosopher called Epicurus, uh, who's, who um, said the following, in a philosophical dispute, he gains most, who is defeated, since he learned, learns the most. Now, that's exactly the opposite to what the politicians do. Politicians can't be defeated, or they don't want to be defeated. They don't want to learn anything from the from the discussion. They want a particular solution to be implemented. Um, uh, uh, so uh, uh, what, it, what Epicurus is telling us is that, um, um, that philosophers enter into discussion, so to speak, in order to learn. And you quite often learn more, so to speak, from your opponents than simply from advocating your own positions. Um, and and more important and most imp important because it's going to be um, there's going to be a link to John Stuart Mill. You can actually learn something from a bad argument, or or rather from an argument that you totally disagree with, because it it may indeed force you to develop your own argument to be able to answer it. Okay, so uh, 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 bear this distinct distinction up because in many of the uh, contemporary debates about public discourse and about knowledge and, and so forth, these two tend to be conflated. And, and, and I think some uh, contributions from the Foucauldians who simply pursue uh, the argument that power is knowledge, or knowledge is, sorry, knowledge is power, um, uh, 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 to the exclusion of almost everything else. And as a result, so to speak, uh, there is no space for uh, uh, um, for um, knowledge, so to speak, that has other purposes. Okay, move on. Democratic culture and toleration. Um, toleration, of course, is incredibly difficult to generate. Um, and, you know, you ask yourself what it is that um, uh, 
uh, you can tolerate. What is it that you disagree with that you can tolerate as against what is that you cannot tolerate? Now, it, it's, it's very obvious that you can't have a pluralistic uh, uh, um, uh, liberal democracy without some degree of toleration of arguments that you disagree with. And uh, 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 again, that, that brings me back, so to speak, to that problematic of how do you establish that form of toleration? And part of the answer that I would want to produce is by saying that you produce it through generating uh, uh, um, a shift to uh, uh, democratic public culture, i.e. Uh, internalization of the value of democracy and democracy entailing this idea of diversity of interests, diversity of identities and so, and so forth. Um, and that uh, uh, therefore a form of public participation um, in uh, a democratic culture, uh, in fact, in democratic practices, is a crucial part of the uh, element. And of course, uh, uh, is linked to um, uh, the argument of the significance of civil society and so, and so forth. The other values uh, uh, of uh, um, public discourse um, involve, so to speak, um, uh, the utility, so to speak, of the public discourse towards generating informed decision making on the part of each individual of, and, of course, public institutions. The, uh, 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 the other aspect of that, of course, is that public discourse almost invariably also tends to generate moves towards some form of hegemony, i.e. some form of consensus on dominant values and dominant ideas. Okay, that's, that's possible because that helps to establish the boundaries of legitimate disagreements. The downside of it is, again, if the hegemony is so strong that it excludes the possibility of, of, of dissent. Um, and so again, we again need to contextualize, therefore, the questions as to the nature of that hegemony to uh, be able to evaluate, so to speak, to what extent uh, um, they support um, um, the positive aspects against the negative uh, consequences. And so the role of dissent and the importance of uh, counter-hegemonic struggles uh, in uh, a liberal democracy ought not to be underestimated. Um, and finally, in this particular, uh, 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 in this particular part, um, frameworks of public discourse, uh, uh, of course, also involve power. Um, the media, the social networks, uh, and so, so involve power because they can have privileged access to information which they can process in a way which uh, um, the recipients of, these, of this process information uh, are unaware uh, uh, how processed it has been, and therefore it can simply take it um, as given without need for, to, for, for questioning. Okay, freedom of expression. Now, freedom of expression has a long history, and I noted in one of the books that uh, I read on this, that uh, uh, the first uh, major ruler that um, expressed uh, a position uh, based upon freedom of expression, was, um, uh, um, was an emperor uh, of India in the third century before Christ called Ashoka. But on closer inspect in inspection, it appeared that um, it essentially meant his toleration of um, religious differences uh, rather than a more generalized position on freedom of expression. Um, freedom of expression, of course, uh, uh, can be controlled on the basis of having some recognized authority that determines, so to speak, what uh, 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 expressions are acceptable and what are, aren't. That, you know, that's why I referred to um, authority uh, uh, in medieval times, for instance, it would have been the church. Uh, that would establish, so to speak, what it is that can, can be said, what this can't be said, and of course, what can't be said, uh, 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 but is nevertheless said, could have very dire consequences for a whole range of people. 
So um, uh, 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 the, this authority can be generated either by institution like the Catholic Church or uh, by um, the uh, 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 beliefs and ideas that are expressed in some foundational uh, 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 form, such as the Bible. Um, the, the other interesting aspect is, uh, hold on, um, is, is technology. How does technology uh, um, affect film expression? Now, clearly, the invention of the printing press had a very fundamental consequence for uh, uh, the spreading of ideas. It provided, indeed, access to uh, idea, ideas, information, and so forth, to a much wider uh, a set of people. And, indeed, uh, uh, it um, also encouraged, I think, the process of education. But it generates... A, 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 um, uh, a conflict, tension, possibly even a contradiction, which is uh, uh, um, kind of looking for constructive good uh, uh, um, expressions. Um, and you expect, so to speak, that it's the elite, and particularly the educated elite, who would be involved in generating, so to speak, expression of this kind as against looking for uh, participation in terms of uh, 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 expressions of the people. And indeed, going back to medieval times, you could see that uh, in relation to the printing press, for instance, Martin Luther was, uh, was a very important figure um, in the German Reformation. He translated the Bible into German. It was then made accessible to all kinds of people. But it ultimately, because it puts the... Um, or to put the uh, authority of the Bible above those of the Pope, um, it uh, encouraged everybody to act upon their conscience and it generated the Peasant Civil War, which uh, Luther, surprisingly, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, was strongly against and indeed encouraged the, um, the German elite to violently suppress this. Spinoza uh, 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 um, is, uh, is also interesting in con context because he tells us something about contextualization of real expression. Spinoza's argument was that um, beliefs ought not to be uh, imposed, that everybody, sh everybody uh, uh, should develop their beliefs upon their own um, uh, uh, conscience. But at the same time, he also believed that um, the majority of the people uh, will never uh, develop sufficient form of rationality to be able to develop uh, 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 constructive contributions to any discourse. So the tension, so to speak, between elite opinions and public uh, uh, or general public opinions was there, so to speak, from the very start. Okay, John Stuart Mill. Um, John Stuart Mill is very important uh, for us because he formed, so to speak, the most influential liberal argument of real expression. And essentially, he argued that um, uh, uh, there ought to be no restri restriction on free of expression, um, uh, uh, provided the only restriction, so to speak, that could be um, empl employed is one based upon harm. I.e., if, if it causes specifiable harm, uh, uh, demonstrable harm, then it could be suppressed. Um, but the question, of course, is then whether it's harm to individuals or whether it is harm to society as a whole. The latter is, uh, is, is much more debatable. And in John Stuart Mill, we find much more of an emphasis on harm that is demonstrable to individuals. Um, he uh, argued that there are two uh, uh, um, important uh, 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 arguments for free of expression. One is the utility of knowledge in relation to um, truth. He perceived um, uh, uh, um, the emergence of truth as, as a form of marketplace of ideas from which the truth emerges on the basis of people's preferences or uh, people's decisions. So the more ideas there are, the better. And indeed, even wrong ideas can have positive value in the public discourse because they can generate improvement on the part of the right ideas. And the second uh, uh, utility of knowledge is to do with the, with the development of the individual, 
who is uh, um, uh, uh, um, who through uh, uh, participation in the public discourse, um, through being able to express themselves, develop their develops their, their their potentialities. This, of course, links uh, 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 freedom of expression to education. Uh, and indeed, what is interesting about John Stuart Mill and his rather libertarian position, that he excludes education from this libertarianism. In other words, he makes education compulsory so that nobody can opt out from this process of acquiring, of acquiring knowledge, which helps their development. So the harm principle is the one that we'll be returning to. Uh, later on, because it's the one which uh, generates um, uh, 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 legitimate restrictions on free expression for uh, John Stuart Mill. Um, but it, if in order for it to work, you would have to accept John Stuart Mill's distinction between acts which are purely self-regarding as against acts which are other regarding. In other words, if what I do has has only effect on myself, I can, I can do it. <clears throat> there is no uh, uh, allowable restrictions. Um, so if I say something which is wrong, but it doesn't harm anybody, then uh, 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 it only harms myself potentially. There are no grounds for restrictions. Okay, knowledge uh, 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 and field expression. So if knowledge, uh, is is at least partly produced uh, through public discourse, through uh, 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 participating in this public discourse. Um, and if we accept the proposition that knowledge is about is power, then we need to ask ourselves what kind of power is it? Because there is a distinction between power over and power to. Power to is a form of emancipatory power. It enables me to do more than I would have done otherwise. Power over is power to control other people. Um, and it is not clear to me, so to speak, that we could simply apply this, uh, 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 this idea that knowledge has power without making this kind of distinction, okay? Um, it is nevertheless, uh, this idea of knowledge is, uh, um, is quite important for uh, the understanding of some of the contemporary disagreements about free own expression. And that is to do, for instance, with the fact that um, uh, uh, there are uh, disagreements about, not just about facts and about theories, but also about the very idea of, of what constitutes knowledge and what constitutes reason. And this is where some of the arguments about truth and cultural relativity uh, appear. Um, I think I will want to say something uh, about cultural relativity, uh, relativity a bit later on, but simply uh, as far as truth is concerned, I would simply want to argue that truth exists, that in fact it becomes totally contradictory if we want to engage in the pursuit of knowledge, for instance, uh, um, without believing that there is such thing as truth. Um, and so simply as a starting point, truth exists, but truth, of course, or what constitutes truth is always challengeable. It's, it's, there, there, there are simply no uh, uh, acceptable dogmatic grounds of saying that this is, uh, this is the truth, always will be the truth and nothing but the truth. And, uh, 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 and this is kind of linked to the arguments that um, is everything political and thus public, and if it is, uh, 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 then truth is constituted not by anybody's conscience, it's constituted by uh, 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 some form of public agreement uh, uh, and indeed is then strongly shaped by the powers that uh, uh, enable, for instance, forms of manipulation, uh, uh, propaganda and so forth. And my final point in this particular area is about knowledge for knowledge's sake, which I think is very important, May perhaps, uh, 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 this uh, is uh, uh, something that is not particularly relevant to the debate you want to have about um, uh, about um, algorithmic uh, aggression and so, and so forth. 
But the point I'm trying to make is that um, when later on we'll, I'll, I'll talk briefly about uh, critiques of real expression, that simply to say uh, uh, um, all forms of uh, a knowledge proposition, so to speak, are about political power is a dangerous distortion. Uh, 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 so let me just try to clarify. Yes, knowledge involves political power, undoubtedly. But there is more to knowledge than that. And that's also important that we recognize that. And let me just illustrate this with reference to um, um, just a quote, a brief quote from probably one of the greatest um, uh, a, a medieval <coughs> a medieval scholars and polymaths, um, an Iranian Islamic thinker called Al-Biruni, who says this. The stubborn critic would say, what is the benefit of these sciences? He doesn't know the virtue that distinguishes mankind from all the animals. It is knowledge in general, which is pursued solely by man and which is pursued for the sake of knowledge itself because its acquisition is truly delightful and is unlike the pleasures that are desirable from other pursuits. In other words, uh, uh, not everything should be looked at simply in terms of the function and utility and public utility that it has. Um, uh, 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 that is an important part of knowledge itself, so to speak, which we ought to recognize and which provides, uh, I think, a quite a strong basis for universality. Okay, critiques. How much time do I have? Uh, it's already past 30 minutes, but uh, if you can wrap it up in uh, as quick as possible, but I don't want yeah, to yeah, pressure. Okay. Yeah. So, so very briefly, uh, uh, um, as I only have one other slide after this. Um, critiques, Marxist, Marxist uh, critique involves, um, critique of, of, of freedom of expression as involving ideology. Uh, it's, it's a form of, uh, uh, it involves forms of manipulation. So clearly if you have freedom of expression, it has to be linked to the class struggle and to, uh, 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 um, and to the presentation, so to speak, of public ideas as having a function in that class struggle. Um, radical feminism uh, looks at freedom of expression as a gendered phenomenon, so uh, uh, again uh, uh, there would be a denial of any kind of objectivity of uh, uh, a freedom of expression. Post-colonial theorists argue that freedom of expression helps the hegemonic power, uh, partly because it uh, assumed, assumes the universality of the hegemonic uh, uh, conception of epistemology. Thus, uh, uh, the use of uh, 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 arguments about epistemic injustice, i.e. an imp imposition as to what counts as knowledge on uh, indigenous people and other cultures and so forth. And finally, there is a conservative criti uh, uh, critique which uh, 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 argues that freedom of expression, uh, which uh, uh, allows people to say uh, 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 um, disturbing things, bad things, and so, and so forth, is a threat to the established order, and that truth is actually vested either in some untouchable dogma or it is vested in a particular tradition, which therefore ought not to be challenged. Um, and finally, to, sum it, to, to, to bring it to the final point, what are the basis for uh, providing restrictions uh, on freedom of expression? The first one is harm, social and individual. Uh, 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 that has to be demonstrated. They cannot simply be asserted. Um, the problem, of course, is with social harm because that clearly is then part of particular ideologies and so, and so forth. Um, Harm is not self-evident. You, you, you need to, in other words, provide empirical evidence for uh, the claim that harm is being done. Um, and indeed, uh, you also need to uh, uh, evaluate the extent of the harm, how dangerous that harm is, because if we give, uh, if we accept that, uh, uh, as I argued earlier, that film expression has important values, 
um, then these values can all be over, overridden if the, um, uh, 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 the threat uh, 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 a value of the harm is so strong that it overrides the value of human expression. Second one is offense. Uh, this is particularly obvious in relation to a religion, uh, 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 identities that includes gender identities and cross-gender identities and, and so forth. Should uh, offense uh, uh, um, provided um, an acceptable basis for restriction of human expression, um, think about, for instance, uh, uh, the um, Muhammad cartoons, uh, uh, anti-Islamic Muhammad cartoons that were published in Denmark many years ago, or Salman Rushdie's novel, The Satanic Verses, and so forth, which caused offence to religious believers. Um, uh, uh, should uh, we uh, censor public statements that uh, argue that transgender women are not real women, for instance? Uh, uh, um, because it causes offence, but also because it, it proclaims to uh, 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 it's proclaimed to generate threat to the uh, to these identities. Um, racism and violence. Uh, the, the emphasis here is really on violence. Um, uh, should we restrict? Uh, 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 um, expression, so to speak, which uh, uh, um, um, involves the threat of violence, real violence. Um, Holocaust and the law, should there be legal restrictions on funeral expression um, so that Holocaust denial becomes a criminal offence? What is the value that we gain from them as against what it is that we lose by restricting freedom of expression? Again, it's a question of balance rather than saying it's self-evident that there ought to be a ban or that it's self-evident there ought not to be a ban. Um, uh, 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 and finally, the last two or three are more linked, I think, to what you want to discuss. Lies and fake, fake facts from, you know, in public um, uh, social networks, should they be banned? Uh, 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 and how would you ban it? And how would and who would decide, so to speak, what is a lie and what isn't? Uh, I am personally uh, 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 inclined. I mean, at least to the question of censorship, who are the censors? I am personally um, inclined to distrust governments when it comes to censorship. I am inclined to distrust judges uh, uh, when it comes to censorship, particularly if you look at the current. Uh, uh, a hot potato dispute in the United States about the Roe Wade uh, 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 a decision. Um, would I trust these judges? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust them an inch. Um, would I trust some impartial, so-called impartial public body? Well, I would. I would have difficulties with that. So, so you know, there are some really genuine problems, so to speak. Uh, 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 now. I know, I know that uh, people talk about these algorithmic defenses, so to speak, that social networks might be employing. That is a, there's a book by Carl Sunstein called The Liars, so to speak, which goes strong on that, partly because, of course, he has no other solution using these algorithmic defenses. Well, I am exceedingly skeptical about this. Uh, uh, um, uh, and uh, uh, I'm skeptical about it partly because it um, uh, 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 seems to me that it, it could not be nuanced enough to actually work positively, it would more likely to work negatively. Do different frameworks and platforms generate different restrictions? I'm not, I wanted to discuss it because I wanted to put a boot in into these university restrictions, but that perhaps is for another occasion. So I'm going to leave that. Conclusions, what principles to apply? I'm only that, I'm, Okay, so there are only two very brief things that I want to say here. I think our decisions that we all as individual decision makers in this uh, have to make about what, uh, 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 how we would deal with this, uh, with this, with these contradictions, with fuel expressions and harm, offense and, and uh, 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 political struggle uh, and so on and so forth. I would say, that we should have gained at least some further insight over the last couple of years or a few more years about the fragility of rights and freedoms. I personally uh, am um, quite worried about the, 
the fact, or the, what I perceive to be the fact, that actually uh, only a, only a, a, a significant minority of people care about free of expression. That the majority don't give a hoot about it. And, and therefore, the more we agree to restrictions, the more we endanger something which I think has a positive value. And that needs to be taken into account when you're trying to construct this balance. And finally, that each of these arguments about what is the appropriate balance need to be treated contextually, not in any abstract form. You need to say, okay, in Hungary today, there are these issues and therefore that the threat comes from there rather than from there and so forth. So contextuality. So that's all. Thank you very much.